Audrey, yeah. thanks very much for coming into the studio. You're uh, welcome. We, yeah, nice to be here. We did a, an interview, my colleague uh, Anne did an interview with yeah. you a couple of months ago. Yeah. And you said during that interview, you know, you'd love to come back. Yeah. And you have already, so you must like the place. Yeah, I really do. It's, it's something brand new for, uh, for me. I don't know why. Uh, me and Dave years ago uh, didn't come over here. I really don't know why, but it's it's it's. Uh, I really enjoyed it last June. Really enjoying it this time, and yeah, I'd, I'd like to come over here more and more in the future. And the audiences obviously love seeing you here because you're sold out. Yeah, it's absolutely excellent. I'm enjoying every minute of it, um, being looked after, um, and yeah, the, the audiences are great. So it's perfect perfect gig for me yeah absolutely I had the pleasure of seeing you the other night and uh, I must confess I had absolutely no idea what a fantastic musician you are I'm not just well, saying that you. because you know you're here and up close and personal but you are brilliant well thank you very much for that <laughs> cheers so yeah. I, it's, it, it's um, um, I mean me and Dave have been together many years but not a lot of people know what I was doing before I met Dave that's right and obviously while I was with Dave um, I couldn't talk about it to the audience then because Dave would just be stuck there you know so uh, but it now gives me an opportunity to do not only do the Chaz and Dave songs but to talk about uh, bands that I was with uh, touring with the Beatles with Jerry Lee and Gene Vincent uh, before I met Dave so you know, I've got a lot to talk about and a lot of songs to play. It gives you an opportunity to blow your trumpet, basically. <laughs> yeah, but of course, and the people seem to like the sound of me trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we'll, um, we'll talk more about the shows a, a bit later on. I just wanted to find out a, a, a little bit more personal stuff about you. You always mention your wife, mm. your wife Joan, and you've obviously um, had a, a great partnership over yeah. the years. How long have you been married now? Uh, well, we got married in 1966, so work that out. And four children? Uh, three children three and two grandchildren. Wow. Yeah. And obviously, you know, very supportive because you've been out on the road gigging almost all of that time. Yeah. Uh, so how, how do you keep that, that marriage fresh like that? Well, uh, for a start, my wife is very, very supportive. She, 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 she loves music. She... Uh, we, uh, she was a bunny girl when we married. I was going to ask you, how yeah. on earth did you bag a bunny girl? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Um, we we were going out with each other before that came about. And uh, it was before we were married. I think it was her dad heard a, an advert on, on Radio London saying, uh, we're looking for English bunny girls. So he, he put her up for the job and she got the job. And uh, yeah, we, we, she was a bunny girl when we got married. So how did you meet? We met, I was thumbing a lift home um, from her house about 90s. I was on tour with Jerry Lee Lewis at the time. And uh, no, hang on, I thought, the, <laughs> I'm so used to <laughs> being asked this question, how did I meet Dave? Dave yeah. I'm sorry, I went in, it's pretty early in the morning for me. How did I meet my wife? Yes. Okay, right, I'll start at the beginning there. I was in a, a band called The Outlaws and we used to, uh, among other gigs, we used to play this gig, a regular gig in Edmonton called The King's Head. Yeah. And uh, that's where I met her. I uh, met her down The King's Head. She was down there. Actually, I went out with her mate first. Oh, right. And then um, I started uh, sort of looking at Joan and thinking, hang on, I think she's better than bit. <laughs> so cut a long story short, I swapped over. She is a beautiful woman. Yeah, she is. You're a lucky man. Yeah, yeah. And she um, starred or she appeared in a film with Frank Sinatra, is that right? She did actually, yeah. That was when she was in America. Before we got married, she went over to America to, to uh, train as a, a bunny girl. And um, he came in, there was a scene in one of his films, and I can't remember which it was now, but it was a scene going to be in the Playboy Club. Yeah. And he wanted um, somebody to serve him a drink within this particular scene, one of the bunny girls, and uh, he picked Joan out, so he, he had good taste. Um, there is a, a slight connection. Um, you've both got a connection with Only Fools and Horses. Mm. She appeared in a, a Christmas special in mm. 2001. Yep. And is it true that you were asked to record the theme tune for that uh, That's dead right, yeah. That was, uh, I think, around 82, 83. Me and Dave uh, was was our uh, that was our really big period. We were in Australia at the time touring. We'd had a number one in New Zealand, and it was in in the top five in Australia. Everything but everything was happening, and uh, as well as that, we got this request through from our manager saying um, 
this chap had written a new sitcom and wanted us to do the signature tune. Yeah. John Sullivan. That's right, yeah, yeah. and uh, he'd done a few things. I hadn't heard of him then, but he'd done a few things. I think he, he did uh, Just Friends and uh, something else. Yep, yeah. But um, we were just too busy, to be honest, and uh, we thought, I oh, would we'll do it when we get back home, but he couldn't wait, so he, he put out his version, so we never got around to doing it. Yeah. How do you think it would sound, the Chaz and well, Dave way? I do. They are, they are going to do a John Sullivan tribute because, as you know, he sadly died yeah. not too long ago. Yeah. And I got to know John pretty well, and uh, he become like a pal. He used to come over and uh, uh, do a few things. So, I eventually, me and Dave on um, oh, what was it? Some TV program. We did a version of it. How it would sound. So, uh, I've got a thing. I've been doing it on the um, on the uh, on the stage, trying to think of the first. So, yeah. Got to got put some money in my pocket I'll fetch a suitcase from the van If you want the best and you don't ask questions Brother, I'm your man What it all comes from is a mystery It's like the changing of the seasons and the tides of the sea But here's one thing that's driving me berserk why do only fools and a horse is worth da 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 uh, tell us the one about being the fourth Beatle. Yeah, I th when I say that, they'll go, oh, I said, I'll tell you about when I was the fourth Beatle yeah. and they think oh, it's going to be some sort of joke. But it was true. Uh, me and Dave, we just finished um, touring with Eric Clapton in 1979 and um, he decided to get married to Patty Boyd. He invited me and Dave and our wives and uh, it was around at Eric Clapton's place. He had a big marquee set outside in the garden. Stage set up, instruments there in case anybody wanted to play. And um, of course, everybody but everybody was there in the business. And um, I remember there were a couple of little kids banging away on the drums on the stage, and one recognised me. He said, Oh, you're Chaz, aren't you? I went, Yeah, yeah. He said, You do Gertrude, don't you? I said, yeah, he said, Come and play on the piano, come and play. So anyway, I jumped up on the piano, this little kid was banging on the drum. Gertrude, when the kids swinging on the go. Anyway, I finished that one. Then I decided to do a bit of rock and roll. I think I was doing, I'm a rat and there's a letter going to mail it to my local DJ. I had my head down. And um, next minute I heard a proper drummer playing and looked up and Ringo had got up. No, I'd, yeah, and I'd, I'd worked with Ringo before, so I, I, I knew him. Anyway, carried on playing. And the, I thought, I can hear a bass going away there. Looked up and it's Paul was playing no. on the bass. <laughs> And uh, carrying on rocking and rolling, looked up the next minute, George was plugging in. So I thought, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm the fourth <laughs> beater here. And uh, yeah, it must have sounded good because it inspired them to jump up on the stage and uh, plug in. But um, my wife was friendly with um, uh, Ringo's wife, who's, she sadly died now, Maureen. But she took a load of pictures and she said to my wife, well, I'll let you have some copies. Anyway, later on that day, she said, oh, I've been told I mustn't let these oh, no. copies of these pictures out. So, um, you know, for obvious reasons, but they're around somewhere. So um, you know, one day you'll see the Beatles with me on the piano. You never know. Somebody watching this might, uh, might yeah. actually have them. Yeah, they've got to be around yeah. somewhere. Wouldn't that be I'd, fantastic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I'd love to see them. A lot of great musicians obviously think very highly of you because you've opened for people like Led Zeppelin, for goodness sake. Yeah, I mean, that, um, that was way back in 1979, just when we had um, uh, Gertrude out, yeah. Is that yeah. Nebworth? That was Nebworth, yeah. yeah, yeah. So how you know how do you get to meet these sort of people? How does Led Zeppelin ask you to open for them? Um, well, funny enough, it was um, that was uh, Fred Bannister who promoted that show. Uh, I got a long way back, and he's still around, old Fred, uh, with him in the out when I was in the Outlaws in the early sixties. He was one of those great, great promoters. We used to do this gig in Stourbridge for him, for instance. And it was always packed out, you know, he was one of them early promoters and he be, built himself up. And when he got to um, promoting the show at Nebworth with Led Zeppelin, uh, 
he loved what we were doing, so he said, I want Chaz and Dave on the show. And so yeah. Led Zeppelin, I knew Jimmy Page from the early days, from the session days yeah. before Led Zeppelin. Yeah. So yeah, we all sort of knew each other anyway, so uh, we fitted on right, right on in there. And you're quoted as saying that one of your proudest moments was appearing at Glastonbury? The first highlight that springs to mind, so what's the highlight of your, your career? The first one that springs to mind. I mean, I saw Jerry Lee Lewis in 1958. Not many people saw him in London. I was one of the lucky few. That inspired me. I was playing the guitar in a skiffle group. I thought I got to learn to play the piano. And I started to learn, but I really came on in leaps and bounds in 1963. I was playing the bass guitar in the Outlaws. Yeah. And we got the chance to tour as his band. And that's when I really first, and it was a fantastic tour. He was at his best then. Yeah. He weren't drinking, no drugs, nothing. He was just playing and couldn't have been a better time for me to be with him. So that was me first highlight that springs to mind. But the best show that Chaz and Dave were ever on was uh, Glastonbury, the very first one we did in 2005. Wow. That was, uh, me and my wife uh, turned up early there. And it's an afternoon show, a nice day. And um, it was about five or six hundred sitting around the stage. I thought, that's not bad. I thought, well, there'd be two or three thousand there by the time we go on. And um, Dave and Mick had come on their own and they were coming later on. They were a bit late, but I was, I was itching. But as it, the Chaz and Dave chant was going, it was... <laughs> that now sounds a bit like a football crowd. That's, there's, there's more than <laughs> seven or eight hundred people. And when we went out, we were just overwhelmed and uh, found out there was like 35,000 people who had tre trekked across the fields. Because uh, Phil Jupiter's, who is a mate of ours, yeah, he yeah. said... He said, I looked at me, watch, he said, I thought, I'll creep over and see Chaz and Dave now. He said, I couldn't get in the field, let alone the tent. <laughs> so, and it really was a fantastic um, feeling, yeah. the whole thing. Can you remember who was headlining that year? Or who Coldplay, was I think. Coldplay. Yeah, yeah. we got a write-up. We did a thing on, um, on TV in the evening, and the big write-up was Chaz and Dave's one song was better than the whole of Coldplay's <laughs> set. So that's all right. But, you know. <laughs> And as the years get on, again, watching you the other night and playing, playing the piano, does it get harder with age or do you find it as easy? Um, as easy and hopefully it always will be. I love, um, uh, the older I get, the more I, I, I play piano continually. I, I come down the stairs even before I've had a cup of tea, the lid's up and I, and I, and I play. Um, I've, I've just developed an un... Uh, written rule is like when in doubt you know sometimes you get I said what should I do so I do, when in doubt play the piano that's yeah. what I do and it apart from enjoying it, it it keeps me it keeps your fingers going it keeps me fit yeah so, I, was, um, I was going to say yeah it must get you fit yeah. because uh, you do uh, put a bit of energy into it it is quite physical yeah which is great you know the older you get I mean we all you know as, as the years go on you want to keep all your limbs working so uh, but the older I get the more I enjoy gigging the more I enjoy playing great balls of fire you set my nerves and you rattled my brain Too much in love, driving a man insane You broke my will, but what a thrill Goodness gracious, great balls of fire Love the car, love the fun, it was fun, day. Came along and I moved me hungry She my mind, I had a tough time Goodness gracious, great balls of fire You love me like a lover should. You're fine, so kind. Gotta tell the world that you're mine, 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 mine. Chew my nails and I twiddle my thumb. Get nervous, but it's so sure it's fun. Come on, baby, you drive me crazy. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. Loving like a lover should. You're fine, so kind. Got a doubt of the world at your mind, 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 mind. Chew my nails, but I twiddle my thumb. I'm getting nervous, but it sure is fun. Come along, baby, you drive me crazy. Goodness gracious, great balls.
to fight.